All right, what's up, Hot Squad, and welcome to my last Hot Banger recap on my Hot Banger recap marathon. So, I have another Watch Mojo recap I wanted to watch. And also, this actually is my second Watch Mojo vid I actually react to, which is crazy. You know, I really don't react to, like, you know, Watch Mojo like that. It's actually, you know, I, the first time I actually did was actually one of the most hardest games of the century. I think the last time it was. So, this one is called Top 30 Best Video Games of the Century So Far. So, yeah, um, I have a lot of games that came, that came out this century that I absolutely love. So, I'm ready to see what in the world, what kind of list they got. So, what we're going to do, Hot Squad, we're going to check out Watch Mojo's top 30 best games of the century so far let's check it out hit it hit it hit it hit it get it get it get it get it uh. there's parasites in your brains Bosnia 3 all the way here from Baldur's Gate welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the greatest games released in the 21st century thus far anyway mm. Fallout New Vegas okay I haven't played this one time to cash out Number 30, Super Zero. Mario Odyssey. Okay, Mario Odyssey, okay. <laughs> Mario. And honestly, I know that this list is going to be a little, little conflicted, whatnot. <laughs> It's, it's Watch Mojo, I know it, but overall, at least they made the list right. But yeah, Super Mario Odyssey, freaking loved it. So far, my favorite game to Switch, man games always make a big splash, and this one is no exception. Mm -hmm. The Nintendo Switch title sees the mustachioed plumber once again out to rescue Princess Peach, but with a unique spin this time. Using his hat, Mario can take over the bodies of most enemies. Yes. This adds a ton of variety in gameplay and puzzle-solving options. I love the T-Rex. The vast and detailed levels feel jam-packed with things to do and discover, such that even after completing the main story, there's still more to explore. Mm -hmm. Super Mario Odyssey is a journey that any gamer should take at least once. Yes, absolutely. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to switch so badly because of this, and it became one of my first three Switch games I actually bought. Actually, Breath of the Wild was actually the first game I actually played on my Switch. <laughs> Number 29, Persona 5, Persona yes, 5. yes, definitely Persona 5. Another 2017 release, too. Wow. Whether you elect for the original release or upgrade to Royal, Persona 5 is a spectacular RPG. Yep. From its art style to its music, the game is just dripping with style. Yep. But thanks to its examination of serious issues, including the personal demons of its characters, it also has plenty of substance. Yep. You may call yourself a phantom thief, but you're still a minor. Someone had to support you. To further explore its characters, dating and social simulation elements are included in its gameplay, which truly immerses you in the world. The turn-based combat is engaging and creative, with unique spins on familiar tropes. All in all, Persona 5 is the total package and has everything you could want in a modern RPG. Number 28, hmm. Hades. Hades. I have yet to play Hades, but Persona 5, I freaking love this so much. That made me get into the Persona series. Even though I played Persona 4 Golden, Persona 5 really made me love the series. Roguelike games have been hugely successful, particularly for the indie scene, and Hades is one of the best. Set in the Greek underworld, it follows Zagreus, son of the god Hades, as he tries to escape the afterlife to reach Mount Olympus. But each time you die, you return to the beginning. Hmm. Her is pretty rough too. While this can leave you feeling like you're doomed to an eternal task out of a Greek myth, the exciting fast-paced gameplay and engaging story with rich characters makes each run rewarding. Hmm. It's this sense of progression, along with a beautiful aesthetic and gorgeous music, that has helped Hades become as beloved as Ambrosia, or at least pomegranates. Hmm. Number 27, Gears of War 2. I really have wanted to be playing the Gears of War series because I never play in games. Yes, I know, I know. I heard it was one of the best um, Xbox exclusives. Gritty over-the-shoulder third-person shooters aren't exactly rare, but the Gears of War series stands out from the rest, and its second entry is the best in our books. Mm, in addition okay. to the incredibly fun chainsaw gun gameplay from the first game, Gears 2 takes the story to darker and more emotional places while also broadening its scope. Oh, shit. Uh, what the hell is that? 
new weapons and multiplayer modes, and a ton of new variety as well. While Marcus Phoenix continues his battle against the Locust in later titles, Gears of War 2 still revved the series up to its greatest heights. Number 26, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Awesome pit, man, because I played the hell out of Modern Warfare 2 on my PS3 when it first came out, man. Man. There are many Call of Duty games, but the franchise arguably reaches its peak with the Modern Warfare series. Yeah. The campaign is brutal and gripping throughout, yes. with every mission feeling like an individual blockbuster action film. Mm -hmm. However, as great as the single player is, its multiplayer is what puts Modern Warfare 2 over the top. Yes, yes. That multiplayer is still freaking goaded, man. Still goaded. The map design is incredible. Mm -hmm. The customizable kill streaks and progression challenges keep engagement high, and the game modes are still unequaled. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 remains one of the best first person shooters even today. Yes, I agree on that. Absolutely. Number 25 Fire Emblem Three Houses. Mm -hmm. When it comes to tactical RPGs, I actually own this game and I never got a chance to play it yet. That's crazy, man. I actually got it about last year around Christmas. I never got a chance to play it. I mean, I have so much games to play. I got so much games to play. What can I say? Fire Emblem reigns supreme, and Three Houses is the king of kings. This Switch game features three branching storylines, depending on which of the titular houses you choose to teach. The turn-based strategic tactics the franchise is known for return, with some new variations, while there's also a greater emphasis on relationship building and downtime, similar to the Persona series. Hmm. Where does your allegiance lie? Hmm. It seems one's place of birth is quite significant to them. The different possible paths, as well as the massive cast of characters to interact with and romance, helps make Fire Emblem Three Houses amongst the most replayable RPGs out there, and certainly one of the best. Hmm. By the way, that's my first Emma game I ever played. I never played any Emma game before until um three houses I've gotten. Number twenty-four. Get three. Gate okay. Three. I would want to get this as well too. Blesses me this day. Together, we might survive. Considered by many to be the best game released in 2023, mm. Baldur's Gate 3 yeah. is also one of the all-time greats. Mm. Freedom is the name of the game in this game. Much like Dungeons & Dragons, upon which its gameplay is based and in whose setting it takes place in, Baldur's Gate 3 lets players approach problems in nearly any way they wish. The extensive variety of classes, companions, and story options make it amongst the most replayable games ever made, since each playthrough will be vastly different depending on your choices. Mm. The sheer quality from top to bottom in this game is truly impressive. Think you can get us to leave that bounty to you? Not a chance. What are you not waiting for? Get her! Number 23. Yes, God, God of War. War. Yes. <laughs> By the way, this is my first God of War game I've ever beaten. Yes, I've never played the PS2 versions and the um, PS3 ones. But I actually own it, by the way. But man, the four, God of War 4 was definitely my favorite game of the last decade. Absolutely. Now this is how you revamp a franchise. Yeah. God of War took nearly everything that was beloved about the series and threw it out the window hyper-realized stories, a crazy protagonist, Greek mythology, gone in favor of a more subdued and introspective character study about fathers, sons, and legacies all playing out across a gorgeous Norse backdrop. Do you remember the way to the witch's house? Yes, hmm. the woods with the blood red leaves. Of course, it kept Boy. the bombastic boss fights and incredible combat mechanics because it wouldn't be God of War without battling unstoppable gods and massive dragons. Hmm. Santa Monica yeah. Studio has to be commended, they took a major risk with this title, but it paid off beautifully. Oh yeah, absolutely. Ah! That's what <laughs> you did! Boy. Ah! <laughs> Boy. Number 22. <laughs> Skyrim. Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim. I have this, um, the PS5 upgrade for it. I have yet to play it. Few 
Few open world titles can compare to Skyrim. While Bethesda has been developing the Elder Scrolls series for years, it was Skyrim that finally broke through to the mainstream thanks to its streamlined gameplay mechanics and gorgeous open world. Mm. The game became exceedingly popular through YouTube compilations, yep. and old school Elder Scrolls fans were able to delve deeper into the universe's lore. Yep. So many versions they've did for this game, so many. Both casual and hardcore fans could find enjoyment in exploring the breathtaking setting that the game offered, and yes, the hilarious glitches added an undeniable charm. Hmm. Video games don't get much more imaginative than this. Hmm. Hmm. Number 21, Batman, Batman Arkham City. I have yet to play the freaking trilogy. I'm I'm stuck on Arkham Asylum, but I haven't continued yet. As I know, I know. Arkham City remains, and may remain for some time yet, the quintessential superhero video game. Mm. All of its stellar elements combine into a magnificent whole that is yet to be bested in the genre. The narrative was mature, introspective, and exciting. The world design was vast, dark, and richly atmospheric. But it was the gameplay mechanics that earned the most praise thanks to the imaginative integration of Batman's devices and fluid combat system. Mm. I need you on a ball play in the trilogy. Its systems are still being copied to this day, and you may have heard of people linking the Arkham series to Insomniac's Spider-Man. Yeah. Its legacy in the fighting and superhero genre is unrivaled. But you of all people should do, there's plenty wrong with you. Hmm. Number 20, Undertale. Undertale. I've been wanting to play this game. I heard really good things about it. Indie games have blown up since the turn of the millennium, and Undertale is amongst the most successful. Created by Toby Fox, this quirky RPG is deceptively simple. Exploring an underground world full of monsters and other strange creatures, Undertale offers the player options on how to approach encounters with enemies. You can stare your foes or kill them, which leads to very different outcomes and plenty of meta commentary. Hmm. Full of lovable, bizarre characters, unique bullet hell-like combat, and some absolutely killer music, Undertale is an underdog success story and a fantastic game. Hmm. 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 Number 19, Fallout New Vegas. Fallout, New Vegas. Hmm. Okay. In the annals of the best Western RPGs, they don't get much better than New Vegas. Set in the offbeat, post-apocalyptic world of Fallout, this spin-off combines the best of the Bethesda era of the games with everything that came before to create the best in its series. The combat is as in-depth as you want it to be, thanks to the VAT system. Unraveling what happened to the amnesiac protagonist and contending with the various factions are just the beginning, since the world building and quests are incredibly detailed and rewarding. Gamers really hit the jackpot with Fallout New Vegas, and it's worth every cap. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Number 18, mm. Final Fantasy IX. Mm. I got this on PS5, by the way, Final Fantasy IX. A port. Before Final Fantasy dove fully into its modern era, the series produced one last game in its classic style. Final Fantasy IX is the last hurrah of the series' golden age, being one of the last games to heavily involve series creator Hironobu Sakaguchi and longtime composer Nobu Uematsu. The game feels like a tribute to everything that came before, and a herald of things to come. Its softer art styles belies the serious topics it addresses, and its story and characters are incredible. Straddling the line between the franchise's two eras, Final Fantasy IX is the best of both worlds and one of the finest JRPGs of the century. Mm. Number 17, Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2. 2. I have the Legendary Edition on PS5 as well to play. what we would do to relive the glory days of Mass Effect. Mass Effect 2 promised and arguably delivered the future of gaming. 
it was an intensely personal experience as players were able to create a character, manipulate relationships, and mold the plot through unique choices and interactive storytelling. Of course, this wouldn't mean much without an intriguing story, but luckily, Mass Effect 2 offered an original and deeply engrossing tale, complete with rich characters and wonderfully imaginative world-building. It also improved on its predecessor in numerous ways, offering cinematic production values and a livelier atmosphere. It's undoubtedly one of the greatest story-based video games ever released. Mm, I've had enough of this station to last a lifetime. Or two, in your case. Come on. Number 16, Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed 2. Okay. You've made quite a mess of yourself, young man. It's nothing, really. You must help him. That pretty face is his only asset. While this historical series has had many games since, its second entry remains among its most acclaimed. Mm. Set in Renaissance Italy, it follows Ezio Adatore de Fienza, an assassin out to avenge his family. The lavish environments are rewarding to explore and beautiful to look at. <laughs> Nearly every system from its predecessor is improved upon and expanded, giving you more options with how to complete assassinations and other objectives. Although later entries arguably improved even more on its foundations, Assassin's Creed 2 set the bar high with both its story and gameplay, crafting a milestone open-world game. Number 15, mm. Mm. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Ultimate. Okay. This I actually have Ultimate, by the way. Despite how well Melee holds up with its tight controls, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is truly the ultimate Nintendo crossover fighting game. Yeah. Nearly every major Nintendo character, and some famous third-party favorites, are featured in this game. 2018, wow. Not only that, but numerous quality of life changes to the controls, new features, stages, and an expansive story mode have helped make Ultimate absolutely legendary. Mm. As fun for casual players as it is for competitive ones, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is one of the greatest fighting games ever made, and certainly the most ambitious. Yeah, yeah I can agree. <laughs> Number 14, Portal 2. Mm. Remember, you're looking for a gun that makes holes. Not bullet holes. But don't worry, you'll figure it out. Mm. Seriously, do hold on this time. Dang. I've been wanting to play this, so... Puzzle games are fun, but few of them have attained the critical and commercial success of Portal 2. While the original Portal introduced gamers to the concept of using the titular portals to solve puzzles at the whims of amusingly malevolent AI GLaDOS, the sequel improved on everything that made it great. I don't, okay, okay, yes, alright, new plan. The hmm. challenges are more complex, the humor is more frequent, and this time, you can play with a friend. Making your way through Aperture Science with a buddy is both fun and frustrating, since hmm. the opportunities to troll each other may have you too busy worrying about each other to deal with GLaDOS. Hmm. Regardless, Portal 2 is the gateway to one of the best puzzlers out there. Hmm. Mm. This plate must not be calibrated to someone of your generousness. Number 13, The Legend Tears of, of Zelda, Kingdom. Okay. Tears of the Kingdom. Okay. So the recent. Listen, we love Breath of the Wild as much as anyone, hmm. but it's... I actually played Breath of the Wild. That was my first Zelda game I played, and I loved it. I loved it. Then I have Tears of Kingdom as well to play as well. Sequel took an already perfect game and somehow improved on it. The already massive map is expanded both above and below with vast new areas to explore in the skies and the depths. The story is also arguably more compelling and engaging with greater interactions with characters. You get the Pura Pad from an unusual creature and learn that your new arm belonged to someone named Rob. Meanwhile, the gameplay has fresh and exciting features with the ability to combine weapons and craft vehicles and structures. The sheer unadulterated variety and possibilities help make Tears of the Kingdom a game worth crying tears of joy over. Hmm. <laughs> Number 12, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Deluxe. Okay. I had so much fun playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe so much, man. We 
Re-releases and upgraded versions of games are rarely treated with the same reverence as the original, yet Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is considered by many to not only be the definitive version of its base game, but also the best Mario Kart game and one of the best racing games in general. Yeah. The number of tracks and playable characters, particularly when you factor in the DLC, is truly staggering, incorporating them from previous games in the franchise. <laughs> All that Dang. content, plus the usual wacky item-filled, fast-paced racing action players have come to expect from the series, and it's no wonder that a sequel has taken so long. Yeah. Number 11. Ain't this the best-selling Switch game to this day, I believe? I think it's the best-selling Switch game. I have to see. 11. Halo, Halo 2. Halo 2. I have also to start the Halo series as well. Years ago. As grand a conclusion as Halo 3 is to the franchise's original trilogy, its predecessor is the one that makes our list. The campaign raised the stakes of the story by impressing upon us the scale of the galactic conflict while also including a new playable character in the Arbiter. New quality of life features like regenerating health and dual wielding were welcome additions too. Plus, that music is still as epic as ever. Still, what marks Halo 2 as an iconic game is its multiplayer. Hmm. One of the first games to take console gaming online, Halo 2 cemented many features that are commonplace today, such as lobbies and matchmaking. This game paved the way for the future of multiplayer gaming. Hmm. <laughs> Number 10. Red Dead Redemption 2, yes. 2. Yes. Yes. I freaking love Red Dead 2 so much. Not only is Red Dead Redemption 2 one of the best open-world games of the 21st century, it's also one of the best westerns. Yeah. Its moving and involving story follows a group of outlaws and their attempts to escape their life of crime before civilization catches up with them. Smaller stories weave fluidity into the larger narrative. Meanwhile, the massive slice of the American West it's set in is full of things to do and discover, and it feels at once realistic and larger than life. RDR2 is the complete package of gameplay and story, and one of the best games ever made. Yep, there sure is. I said about two years ago, around before July, I played this game non-stop the entire story, and I freaking loved it non-stop from beginning to end. Number 9. Half-Life Half 2. Life okay. two. There is a very good reason why the last decade or so has been filled with demands for Half-Life 3. Mm. The first two Half-Life games are still regarded as the greatest and most groundbreaking games ever made, but not for any one reason in particular. For Half-Life 2, so many things went right, including the unique integration of cutscenes and gameplay, the haunting atmosphere, the realistic character and facial animations, and of course, the revolutionary physics engine and iconic gravity gun. Mm. I never played Half-Life, but I will hopefully soon. It admittedly doesn't sound like much on paper, but the sum is far greater than its individual parts. Every FPS that came after has followed in Half-Life 2's footsteps. Mm. It was a trailblazer not just for the genre, but for gaming as an artistic medium. Okay. Like a landmark, okay. Hmm. Number 8, Bioshock. Bioshock. Mm. I'm actually playing this on PS5, by the way. By 2007, video games were finally being taken seriously. Yeah, but it was seven. arguably Bioshock that finally tilted the medium's reputation from enjoyable pastime to legitimate art. Mm. That distinction is thanks in large part to Bioshock's story and themes, which ignored typical action game tropes to focus on the writings of Ayn Rand, objectivism, capitalism, player agency, and free will. I am Andrew Ryan, and I'm here to ask you a question. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? It didn't hurt that it all took place in the visually appealing and inventive setting of Rapture. Add in some iconic characters, flawless blending of FPS and RPG mechanics, and one of the best plot twists in gaming history, and you've got yourself the all-time classic that is Bioshock. Number 7, Bloodborne. Bloodborne. Not surprising. 
I, I played some of Bloodborne. I'm still continuing that as well. And good lord, this this game, man. Ooh. Elden Ring is another tempting from software game to discuss, but we'd argue that the peak of the Souls-related titles is Bloodborne. Set in a Lovecraftian gothic world, Bloodborne may be nightmarish to experience with its punishingly difficult enemies and bosses, but it's still a phenomenal game. Mm. Jesus. The interconnected world is wonderfully designed, and the gameplay's emphasis on dodging and precision strikes make it more technical than some other right. from software titles. Whether it turns your blood cold or sets it pumping through your veins faster, Bloodborne is among the pinnacle of action RPGs. Mm. That freaking nasty ass hounds that I just saw before, that, that man, that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> that freaking hounds, man. Price <laughs> Number six. Resident Evil 4. Yeah. What was that scream though that, that guy made though? Oh, That's funny as hell. I played the remake of, of Resident Evil 4, freaking loved it. I have the original as one as well to play. This entry took a major risk by deviating from the established formula, but it paid off in unimaginable ways. Hmm. Of course, the biggest change came in the form of the third person perspective, but it also took the series in a more action oriented route while still providing players with the core puzzle and horror elements they'd come to expect from the series. Hmm. The result was a magnificent mixture of old and new, and the game became a bona fide trendsetter for future third person shooters. Oh, the freaking. freaking ogre. <laughs> It forever changed camera perspectives, precision aiming mechanics, and inventory management. Mm. It also influenced future game developers, helping to pave the way for classics like Dead Space, so The Last of Us, God of War, and Uncharted. Yeah. So thank you, Resident Evil 4. Mm. Oh, they work. <laughs> Number five, That's The Last of Us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We almost called Uncharted 2 Naughty Dog's masterpiece, but then we remembered The Last of Us. Yep. This game was a monumental achievement in storytelling and voice acting, and it is still regarded as one of the best told stories in gaming history. Yep, sure While is. most of the acclaim typically goes to the game's writing and acting, that is doing a large disservice to its amazing gameplay, mm -hmm. which perfectly balanced elements of survival horror, RPGs, stealth action, and Naughty Dog's signature adventure flair. Should be a straight shot through here. Alright. It's actually kind of pretty, ain't it? Yeah. The game also comes equipped with stellar production values and visual design, both of which help to immerse the player in a realistic post-apocalyptic hellscape. No game is perfect, but The Last of Us comes awfully close. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number 4, Silent Hill 2. Anybody excited for Season 2 on HBO? Silent Hill 2. Oh! Speaking of Silent Hill 2, the remake, I have, yet, I have the trailer to watch as well, the story trailer recently just came out, but I heard it said it was actually pretty good. And I never played the original on Silent Hill game. There are horror games, and then there's Silent Hill 2. Hmm. The game depicts James Sunderland's visit to the titular town after he receives a letter from his late wife. The haunting, murky atmosphere is perfectly matched by the game's story, which is often up to interpretation. While it has plenty of scares, and Pyramid Head is now a horror icon, hmm. what distinguishes Silent Hill 2 is how much it delves into the characters' mindsets. I thought my father and brother were here, but I can't find them either. Even decades after its release, few horror titles have been able to match Silent Hill 2's mind-bending dread. Mm. Mary, could you really be in this town? Number 3, The Witcher, Witcher 3, 3 okay. Wild Hunt. Have the PSR upgrade oh, as well to play. The Emperor does not ask anyone for anything. You will ride with us to Vichima. <laughs> Sure about that? Don't even try. Hmm. You may argue that Breath of the Wild reinvented the open world, but we'd argue that Wild Hunt is the better game. Hmm. For one thing, Wild Hunt also boasts an enormous and unique open world filled with magnificent settings, countless quality side quests, and enough lore to fill a Stephen King-sized novel. Hmm. But it gets the leg up thanks to its narrative, an expansive fantasy epic filled with interesting characters Ooh. and morally ambiguous situations to navigate. No, but it doesn't look dangerous. Hmm. I guess that's that. It established CD Projekt Red as one of the decade's most popular and acclaimed developers, and yep. it introduced the Witcher franchise to its now massive player base. Yep. It's an undeniable masterpiece of the fantasy genre. I'd be your best and last. 
not what I came for. Number two, Minecraft. Minecraft. I'm of course. <laughs> of course, Minecraft gotta be here. Of course. <laughs> we don't think anyone could have predicted Minecraft's success. This little game was independently created by Marcus Pearson and didn't seem to offer much in the way of total world dominance. However, it was instantly lauded upon release, with many players and critics singling out its brilliant crafting mechanic, creative freedom, and countless unique experiences that naturally arise from playing the game. Hmm. All this, combined with the game's signature visual design, helped it become popular with YouTube gamers, who in turn helped spread the fun to their viewers. Before long, Minecraft was the best-selling game ever, yep. a perfect example of YouTube's rising influence on gaming and a bona fide cultural phenomenon. Yep. In short, Minecraft helped define a generation. Yep, sure did. <laughs> sure absolutely did. That's number one. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, GTA 4. Okay. 4. Okay. Hey, sweetheart. Hey. My God, you look like shit. What's wrong? Nothing. I haven't been to bed yet. I've been smoking crystal. Oh. Now that's no. This is a pick I would have chose myself because GTA 4 has uh, always been my favorite game of all time to this day. To this day, it got me into gaming. Although its immediate successor is also a masterpiece, we'd argue that Grand Theft Auto 4 is the superior game and indeed one of the best games of the 21st century. Yes. It follows Nico Bellic, an immigrant hoping to escape his life of violence in America and start fresh, only to continually find himself pulled back into a life of crime. I replayed this back in June, by the way. Still holds up. Still holds up as a masterpiece. There are bigger open world games, sure. But GTA 4's complex and dense Liberty City feels incredibly real and lived in, mm -hmm. with more things to do than the number of times Roman asks you to go bowling. Yeah. Nico may find the American dream not to be everything it's cracked up to be, but Grand Theft Auto 4 lives up to the hype. Yeah. Come on. Let's roll, bitches! <laughs> Woo! Is there a video game from the 21st century we missed? If our list feels incomplete, finish things with your own picks in the comments. Hmm. The drinks in this year bar and this year town are entirely free! Hmm. In the mood for... Alright, pretty, pretty good pick. Pretty great pick. There's a lot, I know there's a lot, a lot of games that should have been on the list, but yeah, I can, I can see GTA 4 being number one. I can see it because look, when I, when this came out back in 2008, I mean, I'd never gotten it back when it first came out, but I got it on Xbox 360, on my Xbox 360, the OG one, the, I think it's the arcade one, ain't it? The arcade one that my brother gave me back in 2009. That was one of the first games he gave me, and I absolutely put so many hours to GTA 4. It's crazy. That's what be crazy. It's always have a special place in my heart. You know what I'm saying? It does. So, Hot Squad. That is my conclusion of my Hope Maker Recap reaction to watch Mojo's top 30 video games of the century. So if you enjoyed this, please hit that button. Comment, share your thoughts. What is your favorite games of the, of the 21st century? And um, yeah, overall, it's a, a pretty decent list. I got a pretty decent list. There are so many games. I know there are so many games put on the list, but hey, look, stay on the list and come and know what's your top 30. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, uh, yeah, I have a top 30 as well, but I don't want to say them. But yeah, overall. Great list, soldier. Great list. Shout out to y'all, man. Shout out to y'all. So, Hot Squad, I know it's Saturday, but look, I have to call it quits because next week, I am off next Friday, by the way, because Labor Day weekend is coming up, and I know I have a lot of continue as well. Trust me, I know. I meant to continue, like, the trailers, you know, actually start the Hot Banger trailers, but I just got a lot of stuff to do. It's Saturday, and I want to get some important stuff done, and it's 11 o'clock right now, so I want to get these two done. Then I will finish the rest next week. Trust me. I will finish it before Liberty Weekend, and I will start my new Hot Bangers next week. Um, hopefully Friday. Hopefully I'll try to do it on Friday or next Thursday. So Hot Squad, this is your man Taurus Hot signing out for today for the weekend. I will see y'all later for more Hot Bangers. Safe out the sky. Peace out, and have a great weekend.